Okay, so I was going to make a video about movies and stuff this week, but I just finished Transistor and now I have to rant for a bit. This video does contain minor spoilers, so if you want to be surprised, you know, other than when the game ends at 3 hours of gameplay, you should probably switch off this video now. Oh boy, Transistor, you got me torn. On one hand, the art style is totally incredible and fits perfectly with the setting, and on the other hand, the music didn't really fit very well. I mean, soft noodling on an acoustic works well for Bastion, set in a pseudo-western, but in a cyberpunk burlesque setting? Seriously, I mean, even when it switches up during like the combat sections, it still doesn't fit. On one hand, the voice acting was expertly done, and on the other hand, the story was absolutely disappointing. The game plays without explanation or rationale. There is no story arc. None. You spawn in, no explanation, game ends. And while I'm on the subject, this game was way too fucking short. Just as the plot piques your interest, the game ends. It took me four hours to beat it, and I suck at these games. At the beginning, you're introduced to four bosses, and you only fucking fight one of them. And I know those of you who played the game are like, oh, Sybil was a boss. Sybil was not a fucking boss. She was not even an annoyance. She just stood in front of you and let you kick her smug ghost face in. And the icing on the shit cake was two of them fucking kill themselves off screen. The big boss door dramatically opens with a whoosh to find the current and next boss had blown their fucking brains out. A plus for creativity. F minus for plot. Now, speaking of combat, it wasn't bad so much as poorly executed. Basically, the combat consists of running into a pen, killing everything in it, and then moving on to the next. It really threw a wrench into the flow of the game as a whole. You're running along, enjoying the scenery, and then you bounce off an invisible wall and have to grind for a minute or two. The forced combat section basically ruined combat as a whole. I mean, I get why it was there. If it wasn't, you could just run through the entire game in minutes, but still. The actual combat was sort of like top-down vats. You pause time and plan out your moves and then strike. Which sounds good enough, except more often than not, your attacks do fuck all damage-wise, and after your turn ends, you can't attack for a short time. So it's easier just to wail on them from afar. It becomes formulaic after the second or third battle. You know, flash behind them, 1-2, attack, attack, 3-4, flash behind cover, 5-6. And that's just for some of the beefier enemies. Most of the time it's just attack, 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 and then when your turn ends, you just run. There was also some kind of system of combining attacks or something like that, but... Like I said, the game was so short, there was no time to experiment with different combinations. You just find the one that's the most powerful and stick with it until the game ends. Oh, this game had so much potential. A strong, unique protagonist. An incredible art style and game feel. Incredible atmospheric effects and animations. But the plot was so disappointing. This is such a hard review for me to do because I wanted this game to be amazing everything about it. It had everything going for it. This game was a black forest cake made with a handful of broken glass. Just as you start enjoying the rich texture and the sweet frosting, you bite down and cut the shit out of your gums. I give this game 22 fucking dollars out of my wallet, and for my trouble, I get punched in the balls by a satin glove. Looks great, but I'm still gonna be walking funny for a week. <laughs>